Hi, Minister. Pleasure to welcome you back to the program. Thank you for making the time. Thanks, Vashi. Great to be here with you. Uh, you, Minister, are in charge as Treasury Board President of the government's purse strings. The Conservatives are accusing you of taking a fire hose full of oil and spraying it on the fire that is inflation. Their words, not mine. Do they have a point? I want us to take a step back, Vashi, and look at the fiscal situation in our country and the economic metrics. We have a AAA credit rating. That is a rating by an independent observer of Canada's economy. We have the lowest debt to GDP ratio in the G7. Minister Freeland said that that is going to continue to decline after next year. We also have historically low unemployment, Vashi, and we are the third most favoured destination in the G7 for foreign direct investment. What that tells us, Vashi, and that's factual, you cannot argue with these metrics. We have very good fiscal indicators. Well, let me put some more facts on the table because inflation edged up to 2.9% according to new data from Statistics Canada. Another fact is that the Bank of Canada's Governor Tiff Macklem has worried aloud about the combined in the aggregate spending of federal and provincial governments and how that may work against monetary policy. And he has held the line with his key lending rate for a number of announcements and has not announced any cuts to that key lending rate. What role does your government play in that? And again, I'll circle back to the idea that the Conservatives are putting forward, which is you made a decision to spend, even though you had additional revenues in this budget, you made a decision to spend that money. Does that not exacerbate the problem of inflation for ordinary Canadians? Let's really examine the inflation number, Vashi. It's 2.9%. It is still below 3% and it is within the Bank of Canada's range, acceptable range. I did research on monetary policy when I was a professor at the University of Toronto and I know exactly what is at the root of your question. We are being responsible in terms of our spending and our revenues coming in. We have strong economic indicators and we are seeking to grow this economy. Let's think about the Canada Child Benefit, $10 a day child care, increases in GIS and OAS, and the supports for families like a national food program. Vashi, this is in order to grow the economy and ensure that people have a fair chance at life. It is a philosophical difference between us and the opposition. They purport to care about the underprivileged and those in poverty, yet every single time they have an opportunity to vote in favour of supports for those vulnerable populations, they vote against. And so I do not buy the argument that they care about the most vulnerable in this country. Well, when you bring up the point that you're uh, trying to facilitate economic growth, but the examples you pointed to all point to actually uh, income redistribution. Economic growth is stagnant in this country and has been for a number of quarters. So what evidence do you have that the investments you are making, the spending you are doing, create a return on that investment for the taxpayers' money that you're using? I believe in your question you're probably pointing to the productivity levels and the productivity question which have declined and that's a fair point. But in this budget what we are focusing on is innovation, AI, contributions to the businesses in our country, for example, returning the carbon rebate to small businesses, having in place incentives for small businesses to grow. They are the backbone of our economy. And so, Vashi, we will be working to ensure that productivity increases with the measures that we have in our budget. And then I will add another point. When we talk about the Canada Bene Child Benefit, when we talk about $10 a day childcare, those are supports that enable, by and large, women to go back to work. And the participation rate of women in our economy with these types of benefits is now at 85% for women between the ages of 25 and 45. So Vashi, our plan is working. We are able to ensure that our economy grows while supporting Canadians, especially the most vulnerable Canadians. I'll circle back, though, to the point about the level of growth that we are seeing right now, which is quite stagnant, for example, compared to the United States. When you talk about the incentives that you've offered in this budget 
to uh, grow or to improve rather productivity. By what metric will you judge that? Because it has been very firmly on the decline for I believe six straight quarters. It's something the Deputy Bank of Can uh, Canada Governor uh, signaled was an emergency just weeks ago. By what metric mm -hmm. will Canadians be able mm -hmm. to judge that you actually are mm -hmm. improving mm -hmm. productivity in a meaningful way? I really like that question because I think there is a validity in examining how we can all work together to ensure that productivity rises. And that is not just the job of the federal government, Fashi, that is their job of all elected leaders as well as the business community. Investing in their workforces, investing in assets to increase productivity, investing in the AI and the innovation economy. So we do all have to work together across this country, across levels of government to ensure that productivity rises. Yes, and I I'm, I'm, would never absolve the corporate side of this country from the investments that they have to make as well. They, they carry culpability, of course, for our productivity exactly. performance as well. But my question was, by what metric will you able, be able to judge whether the incentives you offered in the budget will actually be working? Do you expect, for example, productivity to improve in the first half of next year or the second half? Or when will Canadians actually see some evidence that your plan is working as you claim it will? Well, to be clear, I want to go back to the economic metrics that I pointed out at the beginning of this interview, that the fiscal position is strong across a number of metrics. A AAA credit rating, the lowest debt to GDP ratio in the G7, the lowest deficit, very low unemployment, and the third most favorable destination for foreign direct investment. So in terms of productivity, we need to continue to grow our economy and we need to ensure that all parties are at the table, business, governments and stakeholders to ensure greater productivity going forward. Are you sure the spending decisions you've made in this budget and going forward though are as responsible as you position them uh, right now? And I'm thinking particularly of public debt charges, which next year and the year after will actually exceed the health transfer your government makes to provincial governments. I, I, I have been inundated with messages from people on my radio show today, for example, mm -hmm. saying like, if I spent more on my credit card payment than groceries, I would be worried about my future and whether or not that's actually responsible decision making. How can you justify paying mm -hmm. more to service our debt than to provide health care to Canadians who, by the way, feel like our health care, not your fault, province's jurisdiction, but they feel like health care is, right. is woefully uh, in dire mm -hmm. need of more investment? Mm -hmm. Well, I take the point about interest on the debt, and we do need to carefully watch that. But in terms of prudent spending, I want to bring you back to Treasury Board and the fact that we have undertaken the first phase of our spending review, something that this government had not done until I came into the role. We are on track to save $15.8 billion over five years and $4.8 billion every year thereafter. And we also announced yesterday phase two of this spending review. So Vashi, we are making sure that where possible, we are reallocating funding towards our government's priorities, the environment, the affordability issues, housing, reconciliation. Those are priorities for a progressive government like ours and we will continue to support Canadians across the board with these measures. I'm glad Minister that, that you brought that up because it is important that Canadians know about the measures that, that you're endeavoring but you also make I think a salient point that your government wasn't doing that until you got into this role uh, less than a year ago now. Shouldn't your government have been more careful with the purse strings, been looking for those savings along the way instead of growing the service, the public service by 40% under your tenure, and also growing the, the amount of outsourcing done by 60%? Yes, you've come in and you deserve some credit for the savings you found, but doesn't your government hold responsibility for not doing that in the seven years prior? Again, we did indicate that we were going to undertake a spending review in budget 22 and 23 and in terms of outsourcing I tabled 350 million dollars of savings in outsourcing in November in the supplementary estimates and we'll continue to examine how we can reduce costs on third-party consultants and how we can reallocate that money towards our government's priorities there is more work to do I am speaking to ministers across our 
our government to ensure that where possible they're reducing spending on executive travel as well as on outsourcing and there will be more to come on these measures. What? I also updated the guide for managers in the public service so that they default to the public service when there is work to do and not to external contractors. Yeah, and fair point, Minister, you, you deserve credit for the stuff you've done. I just think it's very interesting that Canadians are to believe you've held that kind of value to their taxpayer dollars prior, in the seven years prior to your, your tenure in this role, when you never embarked on any of these exercises before. And we've seen evidence of waste in things like Arrive Can, uh, and a whole host of other things, and 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 now you want us to believe that you're treating that money with the respect that it deserves. Do you understand how that might be difficult for Canadians to believe? It is the role of the Treasury Board President to make sure that we are prudently managing taxpayer dollars. That's exactly what I am doing and Treasury Board Ministers prior to me. I can speak to my own experience, Vashi, and that is every single decision I undertake a risk analysis to ensure that these decisions are ones that taxpayers themselves would find responsible. And I do press the public service to show their work. And I will continue continue to do that as Treasury Board President and I will continue to support investing in Canadians as a means to grow our economy. Did you, do you believe that your predecessors did that when the size of the public service has grown to the degree it has and outsourcing to the degree it has? Can you actually believe that they embarked on the same exercise you are? Well, I do ask us to take a look at history, look at the pandemic. We were doing many interviews during that time, Vashi, and you'll recall the massive programs that our government put in place to deliver supports and checks to Canadians, the CERB, the wage subsidy, and the SIBA loan, for example. And we needed public servants to deliver on those promises for our country and for our economy, which had come to a standstill. We emerged from the pandemic stronger than most other countries. Now is the time for us to examine the public service and the size of the public service. And we are saying in this budget, what can be achieved through natural attrition? And we forecast about 5,000 positions to be reduced, but that is work to come in the second stage of the spending review. Okay, I'd quickly point out the pandemic didn't start till 2020, but I, I do take your point on what's to come. And I hope to interview at you at a future date about that, uh, those decisions as well. Thank you, Minister. I appreciate your time tonight. Thank you so much, Vashi. Take good care.